For the circular flow model, taking it from the most basic version of this with just households and businesses, we want to look at how they interact in the market. And the flow of resources is going to be about 25% of the picture. So let's start with our two economic sectors first. That's going to be the households and the business, or the firms, if you want to call them firms. Different books do different things, but it's all the same concept. So we've got firms, and then we've got households. I've seen a couple of books orient this differently. I think this is the easiest way to set it up. Now, between firms and households, you have movements of money, and you have movements of stuff. The movements are going to occur through transactions that happen in two different marketplaces. So those are our two economic sectors. Now we want to throw in our two markets. So we've got our factor market. Or you can always call it a resource market. Resources are factors of production because those are the things that are used to produce. So those two terms are interchangeable. Resource market, factor market, same thing. So that's the first one. And then the other one is going to be the product market. finished goods are going to be bought and sold. Now, let's look at the movement of stuff first. The stuff is going to go this way, counterclockwise. So first, what do households provide to the factor market? They're going to provide all the resources. So we've got land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, or you could just say resources, because that's what it is. That's what the firms are going to take from the factor market. So if we're going to abbreviate, we can just say factors of production. Now, the firms are going to take those resources and turn them into finished goods. So what are the firms selling in the product market? Goods and services. Okay. And that's what the households are going to take from the product market. exchange unless you have something moving in both directions. So what we need to add to this is money. And money is going to move clockwise. This is the easiest way to draw it. Now, once we add government, which I don't want to do here, you put government in the middle and have transfer payments and resources and money moving between these different sectors in government. But for right now, we're just going to keep it with the firms and the households. So, as a shortcut, and again, we use green for money. We have our arrows going this way. They're all money. We're going to get more specific in a minute. All right. So, the household sells the resources or factors of production in the factor market. What do they get paid from that? the four payments that we did a moment ago for each resource. So we've got rent, wages, interest, and profit. They sell the resources, they get paid. Now, what are the firms doing? They buy the resources and they get the resources. So for the money that the firm puts into the factor market, these are 
their expenditures. Call them just business expenditures. I don't know that it needs to be that specific. Resource expenditures, if you want to be, you know, really want to narrow it down. Expenditure is a big word for spending. It means the same thing. So, the market is where some exchange takes place. That's the simple definition of a market. A marketplace is any location where an exchange takes place. So, what happens is that each pair of these arrows represents an exchange. You buy something, you pay for it. They sell something, they get paid for it. So all that's happening through the factor market. Now, for the product market, the firm is providing goods and services and making revenue from that. So again, providing goods and services, getting paid. When the households purchase the goods and services, they spend money, those are, household or consumption, which is a word you're going to see, expenditures. All right. And that exchange happens through the product market. So they buy goods and services, they pay for them. The firm provides goods and services and gets paid for that. Now, what we're looking at in Unit 6 is the top half of this model. So what we're worried about with factor markets is what's happening with these exchanges right here. We're not worried about the product market at the moment. We've already dealt with a lot of that in terms of the cost to the firm and pricing decisions for the products that they're trying to move, um, you know, what type of demand curve is the firm facing based on the market structure that it's in. What we want to do now is focus on this half, primarily with wages and labor. 